Hey there guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're gonna continue our series on the VX6R. I'm on a mission to find the perfect ultra rugged antenna for this radio. I uh, did a episode a couple videos back where I benchmarked the OEM rubber duck against the Cattails uh, wearable antenna, the RTO. Today, I'm gonna to go ahead and try a slightly different configuration, but it's gonna be the exact same course and method of executing on the test. So Will from uh, Cattail Antennas sent me a relocation cable that works with the Japanese radios. Uh, that is the one that has a male SMA connector. So I don't think it's available for sale. And what I wanted to do was figure out what antenna I can run with it. And I went ahead and on Amazon picked the Aubrey 48 inch antenna. Now I'm pretty sure this thing is gonna be hot garbage, uh, but we'll find out. And I haven't watched any videos or read anything on this. I have just seen thumbnails and photos of people running these Aubrey antennas over the last couple of years. And to me, they all look like crap, uh, pardon my French. So I figured since I had the relocation cable, uh, why not try out this antenna? So uh, we're gonna get into the results here in a minute, but basically I'm running a uh, AR500 plate carrier. I have on the back here strapped my Haley Strategic flat pack and then routed through um, the front side and over the shoulder, I've got the relocation cable from Cattail Antennas and then threaded through the Molly, I have the Aubrey uh, whip antenna. On the front pouch, I have another VX6R and it's basically just running a hand mic off of the waterproof connector and then the relocation cable um, off of the SMA to BNC adapter. So just to recap, uh, what we did a couple videos back, I went ahead and ran a course three times with each antenna, uh, captured at the point at which I dropped out and was able to kind of see what kind of coverage I would get, assuming I had the exact same station gear. So we're running the exact same station. Both radios are running very low power, 300 milliwatts only. I've got the uh, J-Pole antenna at 24 feet and I ran the uh, basically the five mile out and back course. Now, uh, we'll get into the metrics in a second, but just some general observations. So I am not prior service, and I typically run with a chest rig. So this is actually the first week that I've been running with my plate carrier. I've had this plate carrier for a number of years, uh, but I decided why not? Uh, I also ran it too for the first time with the core performance ice plate. I had 1.5 liters of frozen water um, on the inside here. So I was actually running two hydration systems. Uh, one was from the ice pack and the other one was with the 1.5 liter bladder in the Haley Strategic flat pack. So this configuration was kind of interesting for me, but I needed a plate carrier because I needed to be able to thread the uh, gooseneck and the Aubrey antenna through the Molly. So that's the only reason I ran it this way. It was very interesting, kind of moving. I found that I had to really secure everything. Um, quick tangent, if you guys are not in the military and are kind of like me, um, I found out it took me about a week to get this plate carrier set up for the purpose of what I was trying to do. And that was basically configuring a loadout just for comms, just to carry water. There was no ammo whatsoever. I also wanted to be able to carry my um, land navigation gear. So it's not the kind of thing that you're gonna wanna figure out how to do it when you need it, in my opinion. Like I said, it took me a good maybe 45 minutes to set up the first time and then make adjustments. Another good example is I'm a left-handed rifle shooter and initially I had wired my comms where I had my mic over my left shoulder. Doesn't make sense. So I had to reroute that and that also required that I routed all the other gear. I also found that um, Velcro straps are your friend. I was able to get the hand mic on the front and all the cabling cinched down really nicely that way. Um, so bottom line, it was interesting running with a plate carrier. That's why we train. But uh, let's get back to the Aubrey antenna. So one odd thing about this thing that kind of concerned me is it rides pretty low when it's folded. And my intent was to go out and run and run with it actually in the collapse configuration and wait till I fully drop out of range before I deploy it. Now, one of the issues I ran into was how do you do it one-handed? Well, the Velcro straps here are pretty easy to do one-handed over the shoulder. Uh, not a huge deal to, I'll use two hands right now for the sake of this video. Um, so I was able to basically pull it off and then allow it to 
kind of go into place. The one issue I had with this Aubrey antenna is, what do you do after you want to undeploy it? Well, if I had a buddy, it wouldn't be a problem. He could help me with it, but I was solo. I literally had to take off my plate carrier so that I could break down the, um, the antenna and put back on the Velcro strap. This thing's a little ridiculous. The other thing I found, this is not designed for running at any speed. I had to slow down to about maybe four and a half miles per hour uh, to be able to uh, still run with this so that it actually wasn't, you know, kind of like bending like this. So keep that in mind. So really the base performance or something like this should be collapsed. Then when you get to a stationary position, deploy it to increase your, your gain. Uh, but it's not the kind of thing that I would recommend moving while deployed, especially if you have trees. So just my observations. All right, so in the front of the chest rig here, uh, we have a couple of hydration tubes. One is for the flat pack. The other one is for that uh, ice plate that I have in the back. Uh, pretty straightforward setup over here. I am running the same uh, taco with the VX6R. I have uh, two uh, cables going in. One is the uh, hand mic. This is the IP67 rated waterproof hand mic. And then I have the uh, relocation antenna cable from Cattail Antennas. This thing is, again, just like the, um, the RTO, the wearable antenna, the build quality of this is essential. And I th think it's gonna be something that is going to be required to have this level of build quality. Just the amount of this bend radius here, uh, the amount of movement, the friction going through the molly. If you use cheap materials, and this clearly does not, these look like they are 100% quality materials, um, you're going to need something that can kind of withstand the rigors of, of movement and friction. So very happy about that. But like I said, this is not a military uh, loadout. This was a loadout to provide hydration and communications, and that is it. So I can build on this later if I want to add a couple of other uh, magazine pouches, probably a couple more of the double-decker tacos so I can run two magazines and two 30-round uh, AR-15 magazines. All right, let's jump into the, um, the metrics. All right, so I suggest you guys take a look at the video I did a few weeks ago where I covered the uh, software that I'm using to benchmark this. Uh, this is some custom software. It doesn't exist on the market. Uh, out here in yellow, this is my base station transmitting at 300 milliwatts. And the first point that I captured, we'll call this out and in. This is where I was with the Aubrey antenna and my signal dropped out. As soon as I stopped, it went back in. So it was kind of moderate coverage. And point to point, I was 1.31 kilometers and had traveled 1.75 kilometers. This is actually pretty close to what I experienced with the rubber duck. The next point here is where I fully went out of range with the antenna still collapsed. And point to point, that was 1.59 kilometers, which is roughly one mile. And I had covered 2.21 kilometers. So at this point, I decided to keep running with it collapsed and went about 400 meters and I was still out of range. So at that point, I reached over my shoulder and deployed the antenna and I went back in range. So that is actually kind of good that the fact that you're able to deploy it will actually help in this case, in this otherwise dead zone. So I was out 1.89 kilometers, uh, reestablished communication with it deployed, and I had gone uh, 2.61 kilometers uh, in terms of my actual path. All right, so this next one here, this is when I went fully out of range and I made it uh, 2.87 kilometers as the crow flies and 3.9 kilometers one way or on the route. So this is actually farther than the stock rubber duck antenna, but not by much. So if we take a look now and go to our last data point here, uh, this is where the stock rubber duck antenna dropped out and it was point to point of 2.6 kilometers and then a total distance traveled of 3.59. All right, so you'll need this video and that other video I talked about to really understand the results. So if we take a look at the three antennas we benchmarked, the rubber duck antenna, the RTO wearable, and now the Aubrey with the relocation, where did we land? Well, uh, the RTO wearable uh, did 
did well, but it was not the best performing, but it was the most comfortable of the two antennas. Uh, the rubber duck antenna, this little guy that comes stock with it, actually performs almost as well as the Aubrey antenna fully deployed. And it does not make sense to run with it fully deployed all the time. So that's a really interesting data point. So based on my kind of scenarios, my objectives, I personally would prefer to run just the rubber duck, duck antenna because I don't have to carry with me an extra relocation cable. I don't have to deal with the 48 inch whip. I don't have to worry about deploying it when I need to go into RF range and then also breaking it back down. Um, again, I did not like taking off my uh, chest rig. People were looking at me like I was crazy, uh, kind of breaking down my, my setup while I was going on my trail run today. Um, so I think for me, trail running and in terms of ease of use, ease of not getting in the way, simplicity, the rubber duck already is performing very well uh, with the VX6R. Now there is one more antenna that I just purchased. Uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler, but I'm not gonna tell you which company it is because it's very obscure and I'm hoping it's gonna knock it out of the park. But basically the company has designed a tiger tail, which will basically give us the other half of the antenna. We're basically going to have a small 11 inch uh, dipole on this. So we'll do another test when that comes in. It's gonna be here in a few, uh, few days, I think, but still on a mission to find the perfect antenna. All right, so the big question is, is the Aubrey antenna tactical or tactical? I really don't know. Based on my use case, I don't like a lot of the hoops I have to go through of relocating the antenna, um, only getting marginal coverage when it's collapsed, and then having to deploy it fully to basically get just a little bit performance compared to the rubber duck. All right, guys, um, we're still gonna continue the VX6R series. I know that this was not technically a VX6R video, but it's one where I'm trying to find accessories that work well with it. Um, the next video, we're gonna be looking at my MSA Sordens and how to wire up a full um, active hearing protection to this system. And uh, I gotta give a big shout out to guys at uh, SRS Tactical. Uh, I bought that headset on eBay and there was an issue with the battery box and I shipped it to Florida and these guys picked up the phone, answered my questions and had it all back within less than a week. And now I'm up and running with full headset, ear pro, working with the VX6R. All right, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe and be prepared.